<laughs> it's Halloween. Happy Halloween. Do you believe in ghosts? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. No? You don't? Are you sure? We'll see. You will by the end of this vid. <laughs> anyway, enough of this. It occurred to me recently I did a, a couple of uh, videos. A re last vi video review was on the Revell 148 scale Phantom. FGR2 and it occurred to me that I might have been a bit premature given that it's Halloween this weekend so I thought how can we mark this and uh, have a bit of a tie-in and show something that might be of interest to a few modelers who like a ghost or two or more specifically phantoms yes now don't worry this is not another re repeat of the Indiana Jones nonsense this is just about phantoms. Now then, we have here three. Uh, two in the 48 scale, uh, one being the FX, which I haven't reviewed. And then we've got the, uh, the one we have reviewed, of course, the, the Ravel from a couple of weeks ago. We won't go over there on ground with that one. But I thought we might have an interesting look at this lovely matchbox, which you may have seen before, but not you won't have seen inside before. So... F4MK or FGR2 as we now call it um, Phantom from the 1970s and we also have the more recent rather nice looking FX FGR2 in 48 scale so this is a direct sorry sorry 172 I should say so they are direct competitors um, same scale but obviously let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 35, about 43 years difference, 44, 43 years difference in between tooling on these two kits. So, I thought as it was Halloween we'd get the Phantoms out and have a little look at them and compare them. Starting with the Matchbox, now before we get going, I'm just going to put this in the background so we don't actually need that, it's just there to remind you that it's Phantom Night. So, uh, I made this lovely matchbox one back in the day, uh, the day being 1975. Um, and it's actually quite a nice little kit in the matchbox style, which we'll go into in a minute. Um, but I actually have it here, uh, a more recent one, not the original 75 one I built, but one I built about 2010. Same one. And here we have it. The completed kit. Now there were two issues here, like the fact they didn't bother to put any glass in the, uh, and I was very lazy and didn't anything about this, which is bad, bad, very poor modelling. <laughs> but it's a nice kit and it's got um, decent decals, it's got a good um, set of weapons on it, it's got some Matra uh, rocket pods, and it's got the, it's on the stand, I have to be very careful, it's got the Vulcan Gatling gun which is also, you'll remember, in the 48 scale kit. Uh, not the most detailed rendition here in Matchbox, but very acceptable. Sparrow missiles underneath, as you can see. I uh, didn't exactly go to town with the weathering on this, I none. <laughs> I was very idle when I made this, I've got to be honest. But I got it, I got it quite, just looking how I wanted it, just for a quick build for fun, really. You see the arrestor hook there and the nice finish around the back end. Yeah, it's, uh, it's okay, I think. For a quick build, you know. But, uh, so it's basically as depicted in the uh, the artwork that you see on the front. I've got a fairly decent paint job, I say I didn't weather it, but it's okay. I know another famous modeler who has the same kit. So it's obviously a very popular one, this, and I think it was really sold by its artwork on the, on the box, if I'm honest. I'll pop that there. Very gentle, we don't touch anything, right? The stand's very delicate. So let's have a look at this then. 
So, this is a product of uh, 1975. Uh, some of you may should and don't even can't probably comprehend that date. But uh, yeah, some of us were around, you know. On the side, we've got the this is a Matchbox Red range, so we've got other options which we've got in my collection, of course. We've got the Wellington and the Heinkel 111. So, this is PK404, three colour kit because obviously Matchbox were really into this in a big way. And then we've got this um, quite nice uh, colour call out sort of uh, decal artwork on the back. So we've got the flying can openers at Coningsby, Lincolnshire 1973. So the Six Squadron, of course. Um, I think the Six Squadron also had the Jaguar flying can openers at the same time, or, or there was an overlap. I think the Jaguar may have come in and replaced the Phantoms and they went to another squadron, in fact. But they certainly had that squadron. I'm sure they had Jaguars as well. And then we've got the Royal Navy HMS... Um, HMS... Ark Royal, it doesn't actually say, I'm pretty sure it's the Ark Royal that had them. And then we've got Coningsby, number 41 squadron at Link, uh, Coningsby Lincoln as well, lower down. And as I promised, you can clearly see there, it is indeed a product of 1975. So, let's have a little looky, see what we can make out of this Phantom. Typical matchbox, it's got the uh, that era, uh, first generation, it's got the window. Uh, box so you can see what you're getting inside which I thought was really good you've got the explanation saying there's a stand included multi pose stand although I have to be honest they've gone and put the stand in the wrong place in terms of the design on this and it's too far back to the centre of gravity which causes all sorts of problems the centre of gravity is much further forward so it droops that's why mine's glue but anyway I digress let's have a look inside I can compare a new generation, old generation, old school kit. So, right, let's just pull you back a little bit. So exciting, isn't it? <laughs> Phantoms are coming out here. Yeah? <laughs> All right then, here we go. Nice and gentle, because we're dealing with something that's quite old. I mean, the artwork looks absolutely brilliant. It's so fresh, isn't it? It looks lovely. And this was the uh, Roy Huxley, the uh, the guy that did all the artwork for Matchbox. And I think he was even better than Roy Cross, who was the guy that did the um, Airfix artwork. They are both brilliant artists. But I do like the Matchbox ones a little bit better. They just always seem to have a bit more colour and a bit more dynamism somehow. And I think this is what sold Matchbox kits more than the kit itself, more than you know the price or the colours or anything else. It was the artwork. It was absolutely incredible. So, we have got some bits off the sprue, the tailplane off. Um, but typical matchbox, really high quality plastic, uh, not the best for detail, of course, it's just very much of the era. But unlike Airfix, no flash. You hardly ever saw flash on a matchbox sprue. Very, very rare. One of the reasons I loved it, you didn't have to clean it up, you just snip it off, you know, maybe just clean up where the snip off is, and that's it, you can glue it together. And this is one of the reasons that really sold it to me, more so than the, uh, there's the stand. <laughs> Uh, more so than the uh, the colour thing, which, yeah, okay, when you're seven or eight, which it kind of was, actually, well, I was ten when this came out. Um, it made it, it made, you didn't have to paint it, and I didn't have an airbrush or anything like that, and my brush painting was terrible then, so, like most kids of the age, I suppose. So there's the stand. Then we've got the other two sprues. We've got the black sprue, which is... They didn't give them. They didn't give the sprues names. Strangely, they just say black sprue, white sprue, etc. But there's nothing else broken off apart from that one piece. Let's have a look at the white sprue first of all. So, this is the main fuselage and the uh, uh, the wing tanks, drop tanks, and there's a pod, centerline pod as well here. In fact, I lie, sorry, it's not a wing drop tank, it's a centerline small pod or a large pod, and the large pod is one of these ECM pods. Uh, I forget the name of it now, because we did talk about this on the other one, didn't we? But, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the problem is um, with these models, you've got to bear in mind they were costing, I don't know, 75 pence, 80 pence, something like that, in 1975, would you believe? So you actually got an incredible amount for your money. I mean, there's some good detail here. It's just very, very shallow. It's always shallow. 
Um, and you sometimes got raised panel lines. This one does not. This has got um, the panel lines are uh, sunk in as they should be, and it looks pretty good, I've got to say. It's one of the reasons I liked like building it really. Um, they're just a bit shallow and a bit soft. You know, it's not crisp like the modern style is. But you know, for, for the money and for what it was in 1975, it was excellent. To be honest, I loved them. I love this kit. This particular one was one of my favourites, I think. So. I'm definitely a fan. Have a closer look at this wing sprue, and the one that's got the one missing piece. So here we've got the um oops. Where's that? Got the wings and they're in two pieces, they have an insert underneath, as you can see uh, here. You insert the midsection and you've got these slightly dodgy looking matra rocket heads which are not not a good not a good on matchbox I've got to say these are not very scale like and they're the same on the Harrier same moulding from a distance yeah maybe but pff, no didn't didn't really get that well done which is a shame because in other respects it's pretty pretty sharp you know for accuracy and scale and everything and then you've got two pilots one two well top pilot navigator a couple of um uh Stores pylons, uh, and then you've got the tail planes. Now there's two, there's two options here. You've got two different options. I think one is for the naval version, and it's bigger. There's a slightly bigger tail plane on the naval one. I don't know if I can actually get the camera to play ball for us. Here we go. So we've got this one, and we've got this one. If you look very carefully, it's just, hmm, that angle's not really good. I can assure you, it is just a fraction bigger. So that's the navy version, slightly bigger tail plane, I guess, for the for the deck landings needing a bit more elevator. And then we've got all the ancillary parts. So we've got the uh, all the drop tanks, the wings, and we've got the nose here in black. It's kind of hard to see the detail on these because they are all just black plastic. We've got the bombs. I didn't. Didn't put any bombs on mine, which is a bit of a, a bit remiss of me. I think I should have done that. They're actually nice little bombs. Okay, for a 70 second scale kit of the mid 70s, they're excellent, really. And again, you've got your Sparrow missiles. And they look okay as well. Pretty nice. Suffering from a little bit of a lack of light, aren't we? Yeah. Just if I can. There we go. Let's get a bit more light on it. That better? Yeah, you can see it a little bit. So you get your sparrow missiles and you get your matter rocket pods, the body of the pod, sidewinders as well. So there is there is sort of a decent selection there of uh, of weapons you can actually put on it. So it's not bad in this respect. And you've got various drop tanks as mentioned, and the Vulcan cannon, slightly shorter one. Got your seats, your undercarriage, and as I said. Maybe a tiny, tiny hint of flash just on the seam of the uh, of the tyres, but that's it. And they've even provided you a lot with uh, the ladders, so when you've got its statics with a canopy up on its uh, undercarriage, you've got the uh, the ladders, which is really cool. So that's good. Let's have a look at the old instructions. Oh, there's the engine as well. Sorry, I missed. I should have changed it a little bit there. There we go, there's the engines next to the nose and the seats. Very cool. I'll come out a little bit. Uh, oh, finally, of course, one thing we haven't seen, not its strongest point, if we're being honest, is the, uh, is the canopy and the front windscreen, which are actually quite poor. Definitely the weakest part of the kit. I don't know why they put it in this strangely angled little sprue. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's not overly clear. There's no intermediate window, which there is between the front and rear canopy, which I was too lazy to bother putting some acetate in mine. It was a bit, a bit remiss of me, to be honest. So yeah, mm, not not the greatest style. It looks very thick, a bit out of scale, not very clear. But hey, it is you know 45 years old, isn't it? Uh, if it is, 
It is exactly 45 years old, isn't it? 1975, 2020, 45 years, good lord. A long time. Anyway, rather nice instructions now. For some unknown, that's just, I'm sure they should be red rather than orange, but anyway, if the red range is more of a red colour, so whether it's faded or something, I don't know. Got some decals, which I won't, I won't peel the actual film away, except to say that it will peel away if you want it to, and I reckon they'll be okay. I bet you they'll be fine. Um, fairly rudimentary, there's no stencils to speak of. Just the basics really, roundels and squadron markings, etc. But let's have a look at this then. So we've got the instructions. Typically it's usually mainly French and English. And then you flick it on the other side, you've got on the back, you have this um, quick sort of painting tips guide. Very good for youngsters, you know. And bear in mind, as I said, I was only 9 or 10 when this came out. And it was quite, quite a help really, to have that. So it tells you, you know, how to paint your pilots up, and all your little ancillary pieces that need painting. How to slot together your uh, two sets of uh, ladders, which is a really nice feature. I'd like to see a lot more of that. And then your missiles, etc. On the side, you've got your paint callouts and telling you in different languages what the main colours are that you're going to need. So dark sea grey, dark green, light aircraft grey being the usual. Alright, now then. Here we go. Very simple straightforward tub isn't it? You just build your little tub for the cockpit and then you uh, put your two fuselage halves together with that in the middle. Uh, there's the cowling there for the uh, coving I should say coving for the front of the uh, cockpit with the stick and your arrestor hook. Don't forget it's a naval aircraft and it, you know, with the carrier option it needs to have its arrestor hook. It has an arrestor hook anyway. And then you've got your engines going in, your bottom floor goes in and your, uh, your baffles for your intakes, your nose. Recommending putting the canopy on very early in the process. I wouldn't be doing that if I were you. <laughs> Put that on last. Anyway, uh, there we go. Yeah, Royal Navy version. has got those slightly meatier looking, uh, slightly bigger elevators at the back. And then we've got the wings going in and the intakes. And then again, we've got an alternative option for a longer extending tail leg on the Royal Navy issue of the undercarriage because obviously it has to be a bit more of an angle to give it the angle of attack it needs so it has a much longer leg a uh, big extension on it then you've got your main uh, undercarriage going in and then on this side you've got straight into the weapons options then so we've got The one similar to mine actually, which is pretty much what I've got, number one, Cunningsby Flying Can Openers, then you've got option two where you've got Sidewinders, option three is the Royal Navy version with bombs, detachment to the USS Saratoga, October 69, and this is when they were first taking delivery of the Phantoms and they were learning carrier operations, so it was uh, the very early issue, um, trials if you like. And then we've got the other option where you've got again sidewinders and sparrows and a, an ECM pod, reconnaissance pod as they call it. And you've got your option of your sidewinders or and or matra. What are they? 68 millimeter air to air and air to ground. I'm not sure about how effective they'd be at air to air. You'd have to be very close because they're unguided. Anyway, there we go. So there we have it. Um, you, you have to put this in the context of when it was created and what it was up against. The, I, I had the um, Airfix uh, Phantom which was in the Vietnam trim. I don't think they did a Navy, Royal Navy one. Yes they did but that was later I think. Anyway, 75 I think the, I had the, the Vietnam uh, Airfix one which had lots and lots of bombs for bombing Vietnam. Uh, but it was a poor kit, it didn't go together nicely at all and it was very flashy and all the usual things that I hated about Airfix at that time. Not to be confused with today though. 
but uh, that's a nice kit anyway. So we want to draw on it. I think that's uh, you know, <laughs> I mean now they're quite expensive to be, to pick one up like this with an almost mint box. My box has got a tiny tiny crease, a little bit of dishing, nothing serious, but it's got the original colours. It hasn't faded. Uh, and I've got another one of the later edition where you have this uh, this they always have the top bit whited out and no artwork, so you wouldn't have the sky. It would just be white here. Um, but you're gonna pick it. Picked that up for about 30 35 quid for a nice one, so uh, they're not cheap anymore. You know, what did I say? 75 85p? Gosh, those were the days, eh? But a nice kit, you know, and, and seeing the way, you know, what it looks like when it's finished. Just bear with me one second while I just pop back as I need to. It's quite a nice, you know, stylish, easy to build, not the most detailed, obviously. But hey, you know, 70 second scale anyway. You don't expect all that much, especially when, when this was being manufactured. Don't we have fun with these boxes then? Let's kind of track myself on something. There we go. So, that's it. We'll pop that in so it doesn't scratch. We can. And there we go. That is <coughs> Matchboxes F4MK Phantom FGR2. So, just to, to finally sort of think about that, we, we notice it's got very shallow panel lines, but the panel lines are fairly accurate. You can see it here in the finished product. It's okay, you know, if I'd have done a bit more effort on this, a bit more, you know, weathering done a wash on it and one or two other things like that, it would look absolutely great. I mean, it's a nice model. It looks like a Phantom to me. It's all in proportion correctly. The only shortcoming was this missing bit of uh, window, which uh, I just don't know what they were thinking of by not putting that in. But what I think they should have done there is just manufactured it all as one piece and just had a uh, an entire canopy, you know, as an option at least, a one piece closed canopy and then had it optional if it was open and they could have made it much simpler for themselves but anyway but it's a nice kit and uh, I enjoy building that it brings back memories of when I was 10 you know so very nice indeed so we'll move that over there we'll pop that over here let's now move forward 43 years to I think 2018 when this one came out I think I'm right saying that yep well tooling 2017 and design scheme 2018 let's say 2017 so yeah, 40, 40, 42, 42, 43 years. Now then. So, this is the very latest tooling technology. Uh, the actual product is made in India. So it's, so it's going to be this Indian soft plastic, I better warn you. It's not going to be the nice hard plastic that you get on some of the other Airfixers or Tamiya or even the, the Matchbox. The plastic quality is really good on that, I've got to say. So, I'll move that so I can see him in the background. There's that. Interestingly, it gives options on the side that are basically the same options that we saw on the 48 from Ravel. It's the same three. Uh, the Falklands option, the Villenrath option, which is the blue one, and the Larbrook option, which is the camo one. And into the new style of, uh, of Airfix box, of course, big shiny, lots of red, uh, nice artwork, kind of a CGI style. I'm not sure about that, but it's okay, you know, it looks, looks quite good. Let's see what we got. So this is, sorry, this is kit number A06017. Now I have to warn you, I've got some aftermarket in here, just so people don't get too excited thinking there's all sorts of lovely decals. I forgot about that, so we'll just put them on one side actually. This just for interest though, this was extra decals and more Coningsby's, lots and lots of uh, actually really nice ones, in fairness, and I sort of couldn't resist them. And they had the flying can openers, um, and yeah, there they are, flying can openers. So that's uh, six squadron, isn't it? So there's some good ones there, and I really think you should um, maybe consider that because I wasn't too sure about the options that come in the kit. But anyway, let's dive in and see what does come in the kit. So, 
This is how it comes presented, and it's got this very pale blue coloured plastic and this, this kind of soft stuff. It reminds me a bit like chewing gum or plastic blue tack. Like a harder version of blue tack. Anyway, we'll get them out and have a look. Instructions. Now, you know straight away, instantly, without even looking at properly, that the detail and the, the crispness is going to be much better on this because it's a, a product of the 21st century, which the one obviously is not. There we go, we'll pop that down there out of the way. Right, so, so what we'll do, we'll, um, on this one I think we'll do it the other way around, we'll have a look at the instructions first, and the decals, so. Deckel sheet's so big, it's huge actually, it's massive. Um, but most of it seems to be stencils. That's going to be fun, isn't it? There's a lot of stencils here. God. What did we say on the Revel? It was, uh, I think it was 174. Well, frankly, that is nothing because on this we go up to. Well, I'm not sure if it's all stencils, they actually number every decal. But it goes up to 500 and... This is astonishing. 547. Oh my god. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a kit with that many stencils and decals. It's 547 decals. Uh, yeah, uh, I know that some other modellers complain about this, about, you know, it takes you more time to do the decals than it does to build and actually paint the model. Well, that's, that's really taking it to the extreme, isn't it? 547. You probably don't believe me. Let me show you so you know I'm not pulling your leg. Let's see if I can find it. 547. It's, uh... Over here, show you. You can see that for just next to my finger. Five, four, seven. That is a lot. I mean, it's quite hard. <laughs> that is so many decals. That is. I mean, I wonder. I know that there's other people to talk about this. I think I saw a, uh, an online discussion with this. I, think, I don't know if they're talking about this kit or the Hunter, but I think that this was one of them. And they were saying, you don't need, do you need to, do you need to? Oh, Buccaneer was another one that had a lot of decals uh, and lots and lots of stencils. I mean, of that, 80% is stencils. You know, are you really going to see them? But I mean, not knocking Airfix for, for putting them in, that's really good. It's incredible. I mean, just look at it. I probably need my other glasses on to actually read this. Let me just see if I can make sure that they are actually. I put them on top of these. You know, double vision, magnifying power. Well, I can tell you that there really are genuine writing. It's not just a line of blurb, you know, to make it look like there's, there's writing there. I, I need my magnifiers on. Do you know what? I'm going to put them on as well. I'm determined to see what exactly we've got here. Just bear with me. Well, that is absolutely incredible because it is. It's, they've actually printed the, the writing. It's not just a blurb, it's real writing. That's incredible. Sorry about that. <coughs> Sorry about that, but I wanted to tell you what it was. It's the actual stencils, they are printed. The wording, you know, the, the guidelines and keep off and, you know, all the warnings, it's actually all printed properly. You need a microscope, I mean under a microscope you'd see it, you know, <laughs> you've got to read it. But you're going to have to have incredible eyes. I've just used three different pairs of glasses basically, magnified, and I couldn't, I could only just make out some of it, you know, but it's, that's worthy of note and really unusual, I've got to say, but I like it. I'd rather have that than, you know, some of these manufacturers, they just print a line that's like squiggly to make it look like it's printed with actual wording and it isn't. And that's that's poor, but that's been done properly. So those are actually excellent. I'm not sure I want to put them all on, to be honest, but to have the option is absolutely perfect, isn't it? Anyway, we move on. 
Typical sort of modern style of airfix, you know. Not the most glamorous looking instructions, are they? Um, I'm not a big fan of the, uh, the airfix instructions uh, in, in just the way they're printed. I don't think there's any problem with the, the way they present the, um, the data of what to do. It's good, you know, very good. But I just wish they'd just make a little bit more effort with the presentation, you know. Anybody, anybody that's ever seen Wing Not Wings knows what can be done. This is kind of uh, a bit Ravel and a bit rudimentary, but anyway. So you start by building up your seat belt, uh, your seat and your seat belts go in, the seat, the cushion to the seat and the head box, all that kind of stuff um, is popped in there and then they go into the tub which you build up. It looks like it's got decals for the side of the the tub for the old instrumentation switches. Um, then we move on to see the stick and the instrument panel going in in front and then of course we move on to preparing the the back end for the actual uh, elevators as you can see and you've got different inserts so you haven't got moving elevators unfortunately but you can have them uh, you have options for having them in the, like an elevator up or elevator down position but it requires a different insert so that's quite important to remember uh, don't want to go rushing ahead too much out of your instructions on this bring in a bit closer then we've got some trunking and some uh, intake trunking which is going to be fun um, we'll have to check there's no ejector pin marks on that because it'd be quite visible I think uh, but we'll see later and then you've got that being attached into the side of the, the inside of the actual uh, fuselage and then you bring in your cockpit section and that gets inserted then we've got the two halves coming together and as I say I don't want to be too critical because one thing that is good about these instructions airfix make it very clear about you know which bits you've just done um, which parts should go in uh, and how they should look once they've been fitted in example here with the actual nozzles for the engine exits at the back tailpipes Then we've got building up the sort of centre of the lower fuselage where the wings are going to go in and then you're asked to make a few holes and of course this depends heavily upon which version and which loadout of weapons you're going to use quite critical so make sure you get choose well first and you don't drill out holes you don't need or forget to drill the holes you do need because you won't get them in <laughs> and that goes into the bottom and you can see the fan blades there at the back of the trunking, can't you? Which looks quite good. Then we've got the outer intake going in. Uh, and on, on this aircraft, of course, mentioned this on the other review, the Spey engines had bigger intakes because the Spey's were bigger. Uh, they were fatter engines, but shorter than the American uh, General Electric engines. General Electric turbofan. Then we've got the uh, tops of the wings coming on and the tail and the rudder being inserted and your tail planes going on there, or elevators I should say because it's um, the whole tail plane is an elevator and they go in accordingly in those positions as discussed depending whether you're having it up, down or neutral you've got up, down, well the way they present it, it looks like it's neutral or, or down, diving position and I think that's because when it's relaxed, I think they, they drop into a diving type uh, stance. Okay, then you've got the tips of the wings going on, which is nice that they're separate. You know, this is where the modern sort of technology of the moulding comes in, I think. And then you've got your flaps going in and your ailerons and then your uh, landing flaps underneath. Uh, spoiler on stroke, air brake type of flap. Oops. A second and then we've got the same thing again um, but this is when if they have undercarriage down with the flaps down you've got different different parts so there's some great detail in here with options galore it would seem so that's really good obviously if it's going to be flush and the, the underwing flaps are going to be flush as well uh, if you've got the undercarriage up and you can display it like that and then you've got your vents over the spay engines open or shut and then you've got intakes at the front and ultimately your tailpipe afterburner pipes, exhaust pipes on the tail there 
for the back end of the uh, the engines and the reheat nozzles. And then we got the undercarriage uh, covers, door covers going in if you're going to have it as flying. If not, you need to put in all of your undercarriage legs and the actuators for the legs and the doors are there as well. Looks really good this, I've got to say, I hope it's as good as it looks in the instructions, it looks really nice. And then you've got to put in your inner door and fit your actual undercarriage wheels and tyres. Finally you've got this, uh, obviously the choice of uh, nose wheel, again depending on whether you're naval or RAF. So the naval one's got this long extended leg which is, gives it this high nose up angle of attack and then you've got your actuators, your doors, your front wheels which are a twin wheel set on the Phantom of course and then we start with the missiles, Sparrow missiles or I think it's Sky Flash, Sky Flash or Sparrow and there is a difference in this kit so that's better than we saw on the Revell which was trying to kid you that they're both one and the same, it's the knot because the Sky Flash sits, you can see it there, it sits almost flush and the, the fins pop out once it's deposited from the aircraft. And then we've got the underwing tanks, the drop tank, centerline tank and the option of the number 77 there, that's the option of the Vulcan cannon, Gatling gun, which is a brilliant weapon, you know, ideal for ground attack. And then you've got your ECM pod as another alternative and you fit your load out as required. And this shows you the, the sort of amount of options you've got. This is, Airfix have always been good at this. I remember the MRCA Tornado in 1975, I think it was, when it came out. And this, this had lots of different options of weapons. Something they've never been stingy on, it's very good. Same today, we've got cluster bombs, we've got sparrows, we've got a sidewinder, and then we've also got, look at this, we've got the refueling probe as well as an option. That's cool. It's very cool. Refueling probe, that I like. So you've got that open or close, you've got the arrestor hook down or you know, so you can put it down if you wanted to. And then you've got this um, curving on top of the uh, instrumentation just in front of the windscreen. And actually Airfix have done what I suggested on the Matchbox, haven't they? They've produced a one piece canopy or a separate piece just exactly what I suggested isn't it the matchbox should have done they've really learned from the matchbox mistakes so they've got a multiple canopy open canopies for front and rear uh, pilot and navigator weapons officer uh, or, or if it's going to be in flight you just have a single piece so it makes it easy to build you know and they have included that missing piece that was in the matchbox kit or rather not in the matchbox kit and just completely forgotten about um, and it looks really good it looks fantastic to be honest right got the uh, colour cut out so we've we'll got lots of these and they're all separate sheets so look at this yes so we've got the Wildenrath one the blue one which I think I mentioned when I did the Revell review looks like a show plane doesn't it for air shows or something the other side you've got four that uh, aircraft, you've got all the weapons and stores, which is again, this is good, this is excellent. Lots of detail there, shows how the stencils and the uh, decals go on to the stores as well in great detail. Every position is shown for all of those stencils, plus the colours, plus the uh, any decals, primary decals that go on it as well. Excellent, I'm impressed with that. Oh my god, there's an entire, right, I'm going to zoom out for this. There is an entire sheet for these horrendous 500 stencils I mentioned. And there is about the best part of 500 stencils. That is absolutely terrifying to be quite honest. Just look at it, that's just it's going to drive you absolutely insane. Oh my god, this could take you months. Oh wow. Well. Mm. You might want to take a view on that. <laughs> what shall I be doing? 500 yard stencils. Anyway, uh, here we've got the Mount Pleasant, the Falklands light grey scheme. And of course, there's about, I think it's half a dozen of these on the Falklands, or there was. They've now been replaced by the Typhoon Eurofighter, of course. 
But um, I think this is where they lived out their last days, the Phantoms. They were sort of uh, sent to the Falklands, you know, for their, for their trouble. <laughs> but um, quite a powerful aircraft, you know. However, given the threat from Argentina, which is sort of ongoing, I think they felt that they probably better put something a bit more modern there to actually outclass them. Cause certainly the Eurofighter is in a league of its own down in that part of the world. It's, uh, there's nothing to touch it at all. And the Argentinians have just got old Mirages now, which is kind of the uh, same old stuff as pretty much as what they had then. But even the most modern ones they've been able to buy are still 20, 30 years out of date. Anyway, this is the Larbrook Phantom, which has got the traditional finish, a bit like... Uh, Bit like the one I had here, which is the Collingsby one, same sort of uh, dark sea grey and uh, dark green. Light aircraft grey underneath, of course. And again, it shows the position of all the stencils in colour and how they apply on this particular variant. So that's really excellently done. Got to say, I think Airfix have, uh, have done a great job with the. Obviously the stencils I'm not sure about, but but the way they've done it and the way they've presented it and how to do it is very, very clear and that's really a step forward. Better than the Revel, better than the Revel in that respect. I think that they, it looks much more modern, this kit, you know. Anyway, let's now finally have a look at the actual parts themselves and see what we got. So, where to begin? Well, so what we'll start what we started last time with the tailplane sprue. This is where I've got to try not to let the background get too focused. So we've got the, uh, the Vulcan cannon here, Gatling gun, which looks cool. And centerpiece for, I think it's the pod actually this, to be honest. And then you've got, yes it is, it goes in there, it's insert. And there's the pod itself, ECM pod. Then we've got the, uh, the tail planes. Don't know if we get optional ones on this, if there's more than one, we'll see shortly. They look like small ones, so that's RAF version, I think. Um, oh no, of course, there is no Royal Navy version in this, I've just realised. So yeah, there's just one set. Now, I'm not keen on this blue soft plastic that Airfix uses from their Indian supplier, uh, who does the moulding. And, you know, the whole thing feels very plasticky, rubbery is the word I'm looking for. Rubbery. A rubbery plastic, you know. It's a bit, doesn't feel very hard, it's uh, soft and squidgy. But there's nothing wrong with the moulding. Let's go into this one, this is um, Sprue C. What was the first one I looked at? H, we're going to C now. Now this. We can clearly see the underside of the aircraft, the central area of the fuselage here. And there's nothing wrong with this. There's, I'll tell you something else, there's no flash here. This looks fabulous, you know. It's very crisp. You can see, in contrast to the Matchbox kit, it's really sharply done. Fine detail, lots more of it. Little grills and things that the Matchbox one didn't portray. Uh, and it hasn't got that softness. It has a little sharper, like here on these, the tips, the leading edge of the tips. Um, this is in the takeoff position. I think these are optional, you'll see in a second. In the takeoff position, we've got the tip's edge, leading edge down, and it's, you know, it's really sharp. Really, really good. Series of flaps and aileron parts there. Got to be honest, that's really nice. Nothing wrong with that. Now then, sprue D. This is. What have we got here? Engines. Engines. We've got the turbofan blades. We've got the afterburner exhaust exits. And we've got the actual pipes themselves. Looks like it's been slide moulded. We've also got our undercarriage parts. which look really nice, very crisp. There's even like a, yeah, there's even like a sort of a 3D look to them with a, there's, there's tread on the tire. They're like slightly treaded, a couple of grooves. 
Let me if you can pick that up. Really, really nice. Then we've got the undercarriage legs, we've got various actuators, the doors, we've got the ejector seats here and the inserts for them, with all the seat belts, which look really nice. I mean, this is really good for airfix, I've got to say, brilliant, brilliant. And we've got the coving for the uh, instruments here. And then we've got a couple of parts for the undercarriage section and the arrestor hook. Quite a meaty looking arrestor hook, but then again, for a naval aircraft that weighs about, I think, 45 tonnes or something, is it? It's quite a heavy plane. It needs a meteor hook. Alright, clear parts. Let's have a look. Let's see what we got here. Clear parts. Now then, this is where we have this optional system of having a one piece um, one piece canopy. Now then, that looks really good. Really good. Simple, it's just a question of masking it up properly to make it really work for you. And alternatively we have a front windscreen, which looks really nice, a bit clear looking. And yeah, it's pretty scale-like, it doesn't look too thick any of this. And then we've got the, the pilot's screen and navigator screen further back. So those obviously are when you're having it open and then you've got various little parts here. An interesting part, the radar, looks like a piece of radar. Radar? Is that for this kit? I don't remember that in the instructions, but anyway. Uh, these parts that Matchbox never bothers to think about are in. This is a little window just between the navigator and pilot. And there's some cockpit coving and uh, one or two other parts there to do with the cockpit. Um, yeah, I've got to say that's um, that's really good. Yeah, they they've thought it through properly. You can see that it's got a real uh, system there uh, in terms of thinking about how the model will build it, and not just slapping in some clear plastic and saying "job done." It's been really well thought through. That has and oops. No, we can't get it back in the bag, of course. Do it this way, I think. There we go. No, that's wrong. No, Peter, you're failing. This is wrong. <laughs> can't mess with it. Come on. It's getting stuck on the parts. What's happening? It's dragging. There we go. In we go. It's fun, isn't it? Get in. Damn it, get in, just get in. Right, we're in. They were nice, 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 nice clear parts. Can't complain about any of that. Now then. Huge large. Oh, that's a big old sprue. Zoom out a bit, I think. Oh no, a bit. Okay, so you've got the nose actually attached, so it's just no nose to attach separately. I'm not sure if I like that, I'd have preferred a separate nose, but anyway. Um, you're going to have a centre seam, aren't you? You're going to have to work on that. I hope it's going to be accurate. That said, if you look here carefully, it does look as though, it says, trouble with the focus, it does look as though they've got quite long alignment, uh, I was going to say pins, but they're more like a slot, aren't they? Alignment, sort of an insert and slot. So that should help you get it right. So. Fingers crossed that that'll be not too difficult to get, to get spot on. Um, we have here at the end some rather nifty looking wingtips. Now this is when the wings are folded, so you can see that they would be inserted like so. That would be that would be in the vertical position like that, folded up. So those are nice, uh, beautifully detailed again, can't fault it. And then the actual fuselage itself, 
well it's it's a joy it's just beautiful look at this so much fine riveting detail yeah that's really gorgeous I am impressed now I have heard people that have built this kit that there may be one or two issues about <sighs> it's the usual story isn't it issues regarding the intakes <laughs> still a story all these uh, fighter jets British type ones especially we seem to have issues with intakes and whether it's Airfix have built it or Revell or whoever but I am told that you've got to be a bit careful and do lots of dry fitting before you start getting the glue out anyway here we've got a big sprue with all of your weapons on it's got missiles, tanks Sparrow, Sidewinders, gosh, you name it. That is a big old sprue. Lots and lots, and there's you got your Sky Flash as well. Sky Flash, I think Sky Flash. Um, Sidewinders, Sky Flash, Sparrow, and then your Pylons, Cluster Bombs, and they are nice. They are really nice. Again, we'll come in a little bit closer. There's some good detailing on these. Seems the way it's been figured. Yeah, they've got these uh, panels, very, very clearly defined. Looks very realistic. I mean, you know, one seventy second. It's marvelous, really. And then, last but not least, come back to this one. This is the sprue which has quite a lot of the third option of the wing tips. So this is just the standard tips, not with the flaps down. Oops. There we go. Not with the flaps down, just straight. Not folded, just straight. So like an in-flight scenario. Um, and we have on this side the intakes I've just alluded to so yeah these are the ones you've got to be a bit careful with with your alignments and things do pl plenty of test fitting before you get the glue onto them and then we've got some trunking for the engine intakes and do you know what that is gorgeous there's no ejector pin marks there at all that's stellar stellar look at that it's nothing smooth as silk straight into the engines and then we got the tail pieces here with their antennas on the rudder is a separate part it's not on this particular sprue and then there's a piece of the center line here which I think is the center of the fuselage and you, you put that in it sort of closes it all up but once you put all the workings and the gubbings in so there's no center seam which is a great idea brilliant really um, just looking for that uh, rudder I just mentioned where is the rudder? yeah there it is is it? down there so I sort of lost the rudder must be one of them must not it? it's a little flat a little rudder flop and I've lost the darn thing. Where is it? Must be that shock. No, can't find it. I'm not too sure. I'm going to have to look it up, it's going to annoy me. Just one second. Rudder, 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 rudder. C3. C3. B, that's A, C, C, oh it's there, okay, it's not where I thought it was going to be, it's this piece here, that's the rudder, okay, so that goes, it's, like, it's inserted like that, I don't know if you can see that, it's, yeah, you will see it if I actually get it in the right place, where's my hunt? There. Got it? Whoops. Try again. There. 
That's the rudder. Like that. Right then, so. Well. Well, there we go. Um, I think that's amazingly good, actually. I mean, really genuinely excellent. I mean, what does it cost? Uh, 23, 24 pounds, I think. Um, it's a lot more than 75p, I know, but it's all relative, isn't it? And uh, today, that's uh, that's the going price, really, for a kit with all these weapons, with all these different options about flaps and slats and undercarriage options. Up or down, you've got all the uh, uh, the weapons options in there, and even the canopy options. Really well thought out kit. It's, I really like it. Um, if it builds, you know, even 80, 90 percent as, as good as it looks, it'll be brilliant. Absolutely fantastic kit. You know, and when you put it, I'm just putting it side by side and looking at the uh, the difference. I don't know if I can get this on the camera. I'm going to try. Just to give you a comparison of the detail of the panel, panel details. Let's just look at that fuselage side. To get this in here. A bit closer. Not sure if it's going to show that well on the cam. But there is just three times the detail, you know, this. So you've got a much clearer, more defined depth to everything. There's riveting detail, which is not on the matchbox. Not on it at all, especially on the nose section. Let me get this a bit closer. Just going to hold this by its body so it doesn't snap on me. We can just get those two together there. Can you see? Bring it a little bit closer still. Can we see the difference? in the marking, the fine detail there. It's absolutely remarkable, you know, they've got all the rivets which are not on the matchbox. Um, the panels are deeper, crisper, defined, not just this wishy-washy that you've got here. So, do you know, I mean, at the end of the day it's, it is 45 years newer. So, you'd expect that, wouldn't you? But I think they've done a particularly good job airfix with this. And this is what um, people have been talking about recently in terms of 72nd scale becoming like the new 48th. You never, you know, never in that, that era would you have seen this kind of detail and the crispness, the lack of flash. Uh, you get the lack of flash, but you wouldn't get the crispness as well. It's almost like the two, it's one or the other. So, you, on airfix, perhaps you'd get more detail, but a lot of flash. Matchbox, less detail, no flash. So, if you were a, you know, a youngster that wants to just build it and have it look nice, you'd go for the Matchbox. If you're a keen, keen, super keen model and want to make it perfect, you'd buy the Airfix and you'd have to take a lot of pain because you would be cleaning it up and, and this is in the days when not many people had airbrushes so they're quite hard to paint. And really a tough task, a tough task. And you still wouldn't have the quality of detail that we have here. So, in summary, I think that, um, going back to our phantoms on Halloween, I think that, you know, it's exactly what you'd expect, isn't it, really? I think there's no surprises here at all. A lot more money involved because uh, inflation, etc., over the years. But in fairness, this does look, from Airfix, um, another of their really good recent kits. I mean, I built a couple. Um, the Nat, the Folland Nat. It wasn't great. I mean, they brought out a new version this year. I hope it's better. I had missing uh, short shots. The head box on the ejector seat was missing. Um, the canopy and cockpit didn't go together properly. It was a real horror, to be honest. And yet they produced the Wellington, which is very similar to this in terms of the quality of the moulding and the plastic. Everybody says that's wonderful. I've got that. I haven't actually reviewed it, but I've got that and it looks absolutely brilliant, just like this. So they're producing good ones. And then they brought out this Mark 14 Spitfire in the last 12 months, which was absolutely awful. I mean, not great detail, didn't go together properly. Uh, some horrendous fit issues around the nose and in front of the co uh, cockpit. Just a tragedy, and the exhaust stubs, tragic. What were they thinking of? 
it's hard to believe it's the same company, yeah? I'm not, I'm not bashing ethics here, but come on guys, don't go backwards, you know. They produced the Hawker Hunter, beautiful 48 scale, a stunning kit. And then they produced this Spitfire thing, which was just like something else. It was like they plucked a mould from 50 years ago. Horrible. Uh, laughable. I took one look at that, I saw a guy who was jumping through miracle hoops to fix it. And I just thought, forget it, I'm not interested. No, sorry. Life really is too short for that. Having said that, some of the people that have made this kit have made a beautiful job of it. All credit to you. More power to you as well. But with this, I don't think you'd have that sort of level of issue. I think that this just looks stunning. It's almost Tamiya-like. You know, it's hard to believe it's an airfix, really. So there we go. For Halloween, we've been discussing phantoms. And we have got, yes, old phantom and new phantom. <laughs> I won't stand up now. <laughs> Come on, let's get the box back together. I'm not going to pull the parts away because I'm here there we go old phantom new phantom there we go with our friend from matchbox here just to remind us that it's quite a nice kit and why it was popular because of the uh, the ease of build um you know and the fact that it had the colors and it was cheap and no flash so that was nice horses for courses isn't it really things have moved on which is good anyway Hope you enjoyed seeing the review. Uh, I strongly recommend, if you want a vintage kit, this is a really nice one actually. If you're into this sort of thing, which I am, obviously I've got over 100 Matchbox kits. Uh, well over. <laughs> um, but if you want a modern iteration, you want to make it very accurate and scale-like, then you've got to go with this, surely, because it's just... Is there anything better on the market than that? No, I don't think so. I think... So. No. Has to go... No. Revel. No. Ethics have nailed it. Absolutely nailed it there. So there we go. Phantoms from different generations coming back to life, yeah? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the vid. <laughs> um, we have got some new ones, uh, new kits coming out soon. I won't go into all the details of what they all are, you already know, but there's a few that are due fairly shortly, I think, end of November. There's no Telford IPMS uh, scale model world show this year. So I might do another vid on that weekend, uh, maybe just, uh, it won't be a review, it'll be maybe just talking about how some of the finished kits, get them out, and talk about which ones I enjoyed the most and which ones were not so enjoyable, uh, and let you see the finished product and just have this thing about talking about the final sort of um, verdict on the kits when you've actually had to build them, because it's so easy, I can sit here and say, as I have, it's just wonderful. It could be an absolute pig, you know, when you try and glue it together. Probably won't be from what I've heard, but you never do know for sure until you build the kit. And that's the, the true test. Uh, so you're never really a true reviewer until you've built it and uh, you've finished it, painted it and it's completed. That's when you really know what you, you let yourself in for. So I think maybe over Telford weekend I might do a little vid, perhaps half an hour, 40 minutes, where a few, few of them out on the table, some of the best and worst perhaps might be interesting. And why, why they're the best and worst that I've experienced. Uh, something different because obviously people are going to be missing out on Telford and they're not going to have their fix this year. So uh, maybe if a few modellers do like I'm doing and we all have a go at trying to entertain each other, that might be quite a good fun really. Anyway, there we go. Thanks very much for joining me. Um, thank you for those of you that have subscribed to the channel. Those of you that haven't, please remember to give me a like and please click the subscribe button and the notification bell because if you do that, then you'll get notified as soon as I upload any new ones uh, and you'll be in the know straight away and hopefully eagerly waiting. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, uh, thanks all for joining me. Really enjoyed your company. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of Halloween and uh, perhaps we'll be back a couple of weeks, you know, when Telford should have been on. Uh, I think it's second Saturday in uh, November. So uh, keep your eyes peeled, I might have something for you then. In the meantime, thanks a lot, and take care of yourselves, especially in these difficult times. Bye for now.